morning. I think my microphone was on. Let me try it one more time. Good morning. Oh, there we are. Hi. Welcome to Thrive Church. Those of you online, hi, how are you? Can't answer that like right away, but you can type it in there. Hope you're doing well. Everyone's going okay? You all right if we worship Jesus a little bit? Sure about that? All right, here we go.
15 times because our church is like that. But I want to welcome you one more time. Welcome to Thrive Church. Thanks for worshiping with us this morning. I see a lot of smiles. Extra out with that. Oh, yeah. I forgot. My phone just changed on its own, so I just sleep until that thing goes off. But yeah, extra hour. I really, really do enjoy what we've been doing here at this church, and I'm sure that you do too, and if you don't, or you're just visiting, I'll let you know. We've had a series called Seven, and it's been eye-opening, it's been gut-wrenching, it's been uh, check, you know what I mean? 
check right here. Check engine light goes on. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it because <clears throat> I, I, I look at it with two different minds. One of it is that I don't want to. Uh, and the other one is, but I have to. And the whole purpose for these letters is to help us be a better Christian. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm told I'm supposed to be light and salt of this world, I better be extra salty. <laughs> Not in that way, you know. I got to be extra shiny. So these, these letters have been doing that for us here. Pastor Hector and David, Pastor David and Pastor Aaron. Where is he at? No, he's on vacation. Done an amazing job of bringing these letters to us. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but it, it's, it's, it's done something in me. And if you've been here the other times or not, you can watch them on YouTube. But if it's done something to me, it's, it's, it's caused me to understand and realize even more so how important the word of God is. It's changed. It's, it's brought light to the areas of my life that I didn't want there to be light. And maybe you sit in that place right now and like, there's some darkness here, but I told God, don't touch that corner. I want you to know, don't be scared. Because not only does he want that corner, he wants to use that corner as your testimony for later. So as we continue to dig into his word, let's worship him while we do it. Because there's so much growth, there's so much love, so much truth in his word, amen? Let's worship him some more.
It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious one Sing it out, say It's rewriting my history Yes, it is, yes, it is It covers me with destiny And it's making all things right, yeah trespasses we were dead in our, our sin we were dead in our broken dreams we were dead in our broken thinking God made us alive we were dead in our trespasses but God made us alive yeah. in Christ why because we were created we were his masterpiece what does that mean that means that when our dead dreams our broken thinking and the system in our head that says that we're not good enough and all the filth and the trash that gets thrown on our life, what is our job? To step on it and say, God, you created me for good things. God, you created me for great things. Why? Because you love us. Let's lift him up right now. Oh. Oh. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ speaks a better word. It speaks a better word. Father God, we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy that covers us in each and every season. We thank you, God, that even though we, we might go through obstacles and difficult seasons, your word remains true. And it's always there to lead and guide and to, rec to, to direct us, God, in the right places. So, God, we hold on to your word that says that we were even dead in our sin. You made us alive. What does that mean? 
It means this, church. It means that God didn't come to this world to make bad people good. He simply came to make the dead live. He, made, he came to make the dead live. So God, we thank you. We thank you for that. We thank you, God, that in each and every season when we think like that it's not going to work out or we think that it's not going to be in our best interest, your words helps us. It's the blueprint for our life. So God, we cling, we hang, and we hold on to your word because it never returns void. In your precious name, in your precious and matchless name, no name greater than Jesus himself. We thank you for your name that changes the atmosphere, that changes the atmosphere in our thinking and in the spaces and the places that we need you. We thank you, God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Can we give it up for Jesus? Can we give it up for Jesus? Father, we thank you, God. Well, at this time, if we can go ahead and find maybe two or three people and just thank them for coming out to thrive. And then let's give it up for the worship team one more time. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Are you guys, that, wasn't that a great time of worship? Let's give it up for the worship team again. They, they always do a great job in leading us into the presence of God. We're so thankful for them. I'm Pastor Jonathan. I'm the student pastor here at Thrive Church. And I just wanted to welcome everybody out. If you're brand new or you're like, hey, I'm finally ready for the text messages and the emails and all that, we have something for you. All you got to do is fill out a card. It should be in five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Nope, not coming up yet. It's all right. It's right there. I was a couple seconds off. My bad. My bad. My bad, guys. Um, there's right there. You can pull your phones out if you're super tech savvy and you can go ahead and Go ahead and put the screen right there, and it'll take you to a totally different place where you can put all your info in, and we can get to know you better, because I hear we, we bug you because we love you. That's what I like to tell everybody, but again, fill that out, and we want to bless you guys with a gift, and then also, quick reminder, YouthCon is this week, so if you need any info on that or help with registration, find me after service. God bless you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan. Love your passion, brother. Good morning. Man, that's it? You guys got an extra hour of sleep, and I just kind of got a good morning. All right, all right. It's great to see you all. I want to tell you about something real quick. In a moment, we're going to worship God through our giving. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, in your program, there is a B1 experience flyer right there. And uh, you say, what does it mean to be one? Be a disciple of Jesus. Follow Jesus in these ways. And so there's some opportunities to serve like Jesus during the holiday season. And two of kind of our, our I think five areas there, but two of our staples are our turkey giveaway coming up in a couple of weeks, as well as our Union Gospel Mission Outreach in December. And uh, if you've been kind of saying, man, I want to serve in my community. I want to, to be a light for Christ, you know, to be one, a disciple of Jesus. And uh, I encourage you to fill that out and let us know or just reach out to the office. And, man, we'd love to involve you in that. Amen? Awesome. Well, before we... Um, uh, give. I have a great testimony to share with you about our giving. And uh, but before we do that, I want to introduce to you a young man by the name of Matthew. And Matthew, if you can join me here on stage. And uh, yesterday I called him and surprised him. Is Adam here? By the way, I don't. I didn't see him earlier. Oh, come on up, Adam. I wanted both of you guys. Give both of them a big hand there. And uh, I called both of them. And. Uh, they didn't even know I had their phone number, and I just said, hey, I got their number from Alex and Julia, and I said, hey, uh, you know, hey, uh, Adam, hey, Matthew, this is Pastor Hector from the church. Who? <laughs> Pastor Hector from Dive Church. I could tell. They were like, they didn't know what to say. But anyways, all that to say is I, I called you guys up here because um, of two things. Number one, I've been noticing God moving in your life in a great way. And, uh, and I'm just so proud of you guys. I want you guys to know that. So, uh, but I also wanted just to celebrate what he's doing in your lives. 
And so I want to ask you guys two questions. Number one, um, how did you hear about Thrive Church? We'll start on the end here. Give you the mic. How did you hear about Thrive? Uh, I heard about Thrive through the Uribe family, and yeah. I'm very thankful for that because that has changed my life completely. The person that I was in February is completely different now, wow. and I'm just, I'm so thankful for you guys. Woo! Big shout out to all of you guys, the Uribe family, and uh, thank you guys for being bringers. We celebrate you. You guys are heroes that thrive. And what about you, Matthew? How did you hear about Thrive? You stole what I was going to say, by the way. Um, but I found out Thrive Church from my family over there. Yeah. They brought me here Easter, and I was like, Woo-hoo. I was like, mm, church, I've been here before, but I don't know. And then I found myself crying because I was going through a hard time. And it's just, every time I come back, it's just something special. Like I said to you on the phone, if I'm going through something, every time I come to Thrive Church, you guys talk about it. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. It's like magic. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Lord just kind of tell me, hey, say this, because Matthew needs to hear this. No, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. But let me ask you guys this, because I've been watching, you guys are getting involved. In fact, you got your little earpiece. You're part of the safety team, if I'm not mistaken. And, and Matthew, I've been seeing you get involved. And just God's been working in your guys' lives. What, is, what would you say is one thing po- powerful and, and positive that has happened since you've been really following Jesus? I've met so many great people. Just like they've affected me so much. It's just like God is doing it. It's, it's great. Awesome, man. Yeah. He's blessed you with such good friends. Yes. Wonderful. I've met so many great people since I started following God. Yeah, you got a great attitude, man. You really do. You got a positive, thankful spirit. That's a winning spirit right there. What about you, Adam? I mean, ever since I started following God, I've, I've met people, like how you said, that I didn't even think I would know. I've even, like, I've always wanted a brother, and I have have all kinds of Thrive Brothers, and that's, yeah. that's amazing to me. I also, um, I just, like, like Pastor Steve said, there's, there's light in areas that I didn't want light to be in. Mm. And it's just, it, like, I'm, I'm free. It's amazing. Wow. It's an amazing feeling. And I'm just, I'm so thankful for God. It's just, it's just like, I'm a completely different person and wow. saved. It's amazing. Yeah. Come on, man. Can we give God praise for what he's doing? And how old are you guys? You guys are, are you guys still in high school or just, just right now? So yeah. you guys are, yeah, you guys. So how many of you guys know, isn't it, it, it's always special to see anybody, but to see young men of God uh, serve the Lord in your youth. We want you to know we are so proud of you. We're so proud of you guys. So when you see them today, give them a big high five, all right? You guys can be seated. Love you guys, man. Thank you guys. Yeah. I just thought, man, you know what? We need to, to celebrate some of the new life and some of the good things that the Lord is doing in and through our church. And, uh, and again, we thank you guys as well, the Uribe family, all you guys, man. What a blessing. Um, I have great news to share with you. As many of you know, um, we have targeted October as our Project Rescue Month, meaning that we were partnering with a ministry called Project Rescue, and this ministry exists to rescue women and children who are in sexual slavery. And so we said um, that one of their new uh, projects for the year is to build a home in Bangladesh, and God, God sent the right missionary there. It's a lady, and she's teaching, not only is she, is she rescuing them, but she's teaching them the Word of God, but she's also teaching them, I forgot how to say it. Martial arts, but it's uh, Kal McGraw or something like that. I don't know how you say that, you know. I'm probably messing it up. But anyways, but, but God's uh, doing gr- great things. Well, we as a church, everything we gave to Kingdom Builders, um, which is the separate fund from the tithe fund, that, that's what the, everything that we give there, it goes out. And, uh, and we were able to give just a sliver under $29,000 to help build this home. And it's well on its way, and it's going to happen. Um, and I just want to say thank you for being a generous church. And you may or may not realize this, but not only are you a part of a loving church, you're a part of a generous church. And people that are willing to say, God, I want to not only put you first, but God, I want to help build your kingdom. And so, God, what a thank, what, what, a, uh, what a blessing. And, and we're so thankful for that, God, that we can partner with you and each other, God, to do good things in your name. And I believe that women are going to be rescued, children are going to be rescued, God, in different parts of the world, and particularly Bangladesh. And God, we say thank you, God, that... That, God, that we can make this, this difference in their lives, God. And, Lord, God, we bring to you these ties as well as, as just as a way to tell you that you are first in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you as you give to God. Hey, church family.
I'm Renee, and these are your Thrive video announcements. At Thrive Church, our mission is to be one and make one. Well, this is your opportunity to physically be one. Every year we come together as a church family to bless those in need in our community. We are calling it the B1 experience. If you have the desire to serve our community and love being a blessing, please see the insert in your bulletin for details and how you can participate or visit the Get Involved table in the lobby. Thrive Youth, we have talked about it, we have anticipated it, and it's finally here. YouthCon is this Friday and Saturday. We are so excited to have you with us. Please note, the last day to secure your spot and submit payment is Wednesday, November 9th. So if you haven't submitted registration or payment, see Pastor Jonathan today to lock it in. Hey parents, we know children are a blessing from God. We believe that it is our calling to train them up in the way they should go so that when they're older, they will not depart from it. That being said, we are delighted to announce that we'll be having child dedications on December 11th. If you are interested, please visit the Get Involved table after church. And that's it for your Thrive video announcements. For more information, go to the Thrive app, Thrive website, or Get Involved table in the lobby today. Hey, church family. I couldn't resist. Every time it gets to that, it's like that epic moment, right? It's like, I just feel like, yeah, I got to jump off the stage, but then I'm going to land and break my leg. So, well, today, if you haven't been here for the last month, is the last of the messages in our series called Seven. And we have been looking for the last four weeks. Some of you guys are like, how are we going to do this for four weeks? But there's actually seven messages because three of them were on a Wednesday night. But this is the last of today's, this is number seven of seven, letters to seven churches. So if you weren't here, let me just kind of bring you up to speed. Many, many moons ago, 2,000 plus years, the apostle John, one of the 12 apostles, was banished to the island of Patmos in, near Turkey, Greece. And while he was there, he was in a cave and he received a revelation from Jesus Christ himself. And uh, in fact, it's what we call the book of Revelation. Okay, and that's one of those books that most of us kind of see it as an ominous type of, 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 you know, part of scripture. And it is because there's so much incredible symbolism. There's also, you know, it's, it's about the things to come, the end of times in part. And so at the beginning of this revelation, Jesus himself told John, he said, John, I want you to give these seven letters to seven different churches around Turkey. And, of course, it's, it was both specific to who they were and where they were, but also because God's word is never just limited. God's word has so much power. It carries, how many of you guys know, multiplied impact and revelation. And so it speaks just as much to us as it does to them. It's the word of God. It's living. It's active. And so this is the seventh letter. And over the last seven weeks, or excuse me, the seven services that we covered this, we looked at the first week, we looked at the, the, the letter to the church of Ephesus, and it was the loveless church. It was basically Jesus came to the church and he said, guys, you guys are obedient, but you're grumpy. In fact, you got to get back to your first love, you know, the, and, and so he did. And he said, in fact, I'm going to show you the way back. And, and the next week we looked at the church of Smyrna, and like you know, it is still is today, they were a suffering church. They were being persecuted for their faith. And in so many words, you know, Jesus encouraged them. And he said, you know what, I'm proud of you guys. And in fact, he even told them, he said, you guys are poor in the natural, but in actuality, the way I see you is you're rich because you did not deny my faith. And then last week, the third Sunday, we looked at the church of Laodicea. And I started the message, if you guys remember, by saying, you guys are going to love it. Um, it's almost like when you get a, you know, when, you're, when you're, uh, you know, workout trainer tells you you're going to love today's workout. How many of you guys know you're not really going to love it, you know. Your muscles are going to love it. 
How many of you guys know we've been eating a lot of meat over the last, a lot of protein over the spiritual protein over the last month, right? And so, um, and so of course, he, he challenged him. He said, you know what? You guys are lukewarm. In fact, opposite of the church of Smyrna, he said, you guys think you're rich, but spiritually you're poor, you're blind, and you're naked. And they were like, ouch. Of course, but Jesus said, here I am. I'm standing at the door. I'm going to knock. I want you to open up to me, and I'm going to take you to the place of fire and passion that you've been destined to. And then, of course, the last three Wednesdays, we had great messages from Pastor David, Pastor Steve, and Pastor Aaron, who's on vacation. Pastor Aaron, I know you're probably watching. Aloha, or wherever you guys are at. Costa Rica. Orale. Okay, I don't know. They probably don't say that. That's Mexico. But anyway. Pergamon, they, we preached about the compromising church, the corrupt church, the dead church of Sardis, and our staff. Didn't our staff do a great job on Wednesday nights? You guys killed it. Today, we end on a high note. In fact, I saved this one for last because similar to the church in Smyrna, there were only two of the seven that received no correction. Um, but Jesus, not that they were perfect, but Jesus... Um, understood that they didn't need a word of correction, but actually he gave them all praise and affirmation. So the second church like this is the one that we're going to study today is the church of Philadelphia, okay? Not Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but Philadelphia, Turkey. And, uh, and so Jesus has all encouragement, affirmation. And so today, if you're wondering, man, Lord, am I going to, is it going to be a Bam! It, it is. It's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, challenge us, but more than anything, it's going to inspire you and it's going to encourage you. My prayer is that you, you're going to come today and you're, you're going to leave with a faith lift and a facelift. Come on, somebody. Because when your faith is lifted, your face is lifted. Come on, somebody. And uh, you're going to be encouraged in Jesus' name. So with that, can you stand with me as we read the first two verses of the, ch- the letter to the church in Philadelphia? This is also known as the persevering church. Are you ready? So Jesus says, write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key. Just hold a key in your hand. The key of David. What does that mean? I'm going to explain in a moment. He said what he opens, say it with me, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Woo, how many guys know he's got the power, right? Go ahead and say it in your singing voice. He's got the power. Okay, look at the next verse. Just got to keep you awake. That's all right there. He says this before you see. He said, I know all the things you do. Just say, uh-oh. More than Santa Claus. He knows, he knows whether you've been good or bad, right? No, I'm just kidding. He says, can you say this last line with me? And this is so powerful. He says, I have opened a door for you that no one can close. Say it one more time. I have opened a door for you that no one can close. Come on, somebody. Before you're, tell, tell, before you're seated, tell someone, he's opening doors. He's opening doors. Come on, somebody. Give him a high five. You can be seated. Woo, it's going to be a good one. I give you permission right now, if I say something that encourages you, feel free to say yes and amen. All right. Are you ready? Why did Jesus say these words? Why did he say, I'm opening a door, I've opened a door that no one can close? Because very practically, the church of Philadelphia had doors that were being shut in their faces because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus was telling them up front, he says, guys, I want to just, even as I start this letter, I want to let you know right up front, I'm the one who possesses the key of David. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot to us today because we're kind of like, well, what does all that mean? They knew exactly what that meant. And this is what it meant. David was seen as the true king of Israel. And Jesus is essentially saying, he says, I'm the king, both from an earthly lineage, the lineage of, of David, and he was, he was from the, he was from the tribe of Judah. But also from a heavenly lineage, of course, he came as the son of God. He says, I'm the only one that has the true authority to open and close doors, both in the natural realm and in the spiritual realm. And I want to let you know, even though there's been doors that have been closed in your natural realm, but I want to let you know, I'm the only one who has the authority to open doors. And when I do, no one can close that door. He says, I've opened the door, and he says it to us as well, I've opened the door of salvation, and no one can close it. I've opened the door for healing, 
for eternity. And I've opened the door for peace, for eternal life, and no man can close that door. Somebody say, amen. I needed to hear that today. This is a powerful word, I believe, for all of us, but especially if you're here. And you know what? The enemy's been lying to you. Maybe you're here today, and, and you've been looking at a closed door in the natural, or maybe even a closed door in your spirit. You've, you've, you've uh, lost your peace. You've lost your joy. You've lost your love. And, and, and there's something inside you that's been just, it's, you've been struggling, and the Lord wants you to hear this today. I am the one who has, I'm the only one, he says, not me, him. He says, I have the ability to open doors, and when I do, no one can close that door. In fact, this phrase has been stirring in my heart all week long. Can you just even say that with me one more time out loud? Say, I've opened a door. No one can close it. God wants you to, to get that deep. He wants us to get that deep inside of us today. Because the enemy is always, how many of you guys know the devil is a liar? In fact, the Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren, meaning one of his primary, you know, tactics is he just whispers lies of accusation and defeat and discouragement. And he tries to wear us down and discourage us constantly. And so not that we give him too much credit or anything, but but it just is what it is. And so the enemy's been lying to many of us because that's what he does. And he's been saying to some of us, you know what, that door, it's just going to stay closed. You know what, that, that thing that you've been dealing with and, and, and right now it's not open, you know what, it's, it's going to stay closed forever. Or you know what, you're not even worthy for that door to be reopened again because of the things that, that, you've, that you've done in your life. But the Lord wants you to know, you know what, he doesn't have that authority. He doesn't have the authority to say that or to do that. God is the only one. Jesus is the only one with the true authority. He possesses the key of David. He's saying, I'm the one who has it authority, ultimate authority in heaven and on earth, and when I open a door, no one can close it. And when I close a door, no one can open it. I'm that powerful. I'm that good. And I believe the Lord wants us to know this, that he wants to open doors in our lives. Not only of the things that we see in his word, the doors of salvation. Come on, somebody. That's the ultimate door, right? But I believe the Lord wants us to know. And it's interesting that he said this. He said, I possess the key of David because David was an earthly king. But he was also a type of, you know, the spiritual king, the son of God. And so, but basically he was saying, you know what, I, he wants to, he, I believe he wants to remind us, I can open doors not only, of course, in spiritual matters, but I want to move in your practical everyday lives. I want to move in the natural realm. In fact, I believe the Lord is saying to some of us, you know what, I want to open doors this season of new relationships. I want to open doors of new streams of provision because I am Jehovah Jireh your provider. I want to open doors for new ministry. I'm going to open the door, Dave, Pastor David, for where he's going, to, he's going to send us. You know why? Because when God opens the door, no man can close it. Are you with me today? Man, I'm preaching a little bit better than, than we're amen in right now, but it's okay. It's going to get better. Tell your neighbor, it's about to get, you're about to do a better job right now and just stir, get your spirit stirred up. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Look at this next verse here. I love this. Not only did he say that powerful truth, but there's another, he just followed up with another powerful one. He says this, you have little strength. And that's not a slam. How many of you guys know Jesus only speaks truth? He only speaks truth. He never flatters, or nor does he say something to, to, he just speaks truth. He says, you have little strength, yet, and watch this, this is, this is profound. It's a spiritual secret that, that, you know what, you have to understand. He says, you have little strength, yet you obeyed my word. And you did not deny me. You say, what's the spiritual secret? And this is, in fact, let me just say it this way here. Little human strength mixed with obedience opens the door to God's supernatural power to step in. <laughs> little strength? You say, well, what, what, what are you trying to say I, all I have is little strength? Absolutely. In fact, that's all any of us have. None of us here can, st can boast. We, we, we can do it, but the reality is it's just not true. You know, nobody can say, you know what, oh, I have just all kinds of strength. Well, today you might, but then what about tomorrow? What about yesterday? You know, I mean, consistently, we are just, we're human. And that's not to put anybody down. We've been made in the image of God. We are the ones who the Lord loves. And yet, we have little strength in ourselves. He says, you have little strength, yet you have obeyed me. What does it also say? We have the ability with the little, we have just enough mustard seed-sized faith to obey the Lord. 
to do what he's asked us to do. And if we do, we're opening the door wide open for God to step in and say, okay, I've been waiting for you to use, to exercise the little bit of faith, the mustard seed size faith that you have. And if you do, I'm going to, I'm going to open the windows of heaven and you're going to experience my power. You're going to experience my strength. Are you with me today? You say, so what does that mean? We don't have, it is, it is an untrue statement for a believer to say or even think, you know what, I don't have the ability to be sexually pure, as the Lord would have me to. I don't have the ability to be a generous person and to walk at that level and to be a tither or a, give, or a generous person. I don't have the ability to forgive this person because what they've done is just too much. You know what those are? Those are the lies of the enemy. You say, well, I don't have that kind of strength. You don't entirely. But you have just enough, are you, are you hearing me? You have just enough to step out of the boat like Peter and to say, God, I don't know how we're going to walk on this water, God. I don't know how we're going to accomplish this thing, God. I don't know how we're going to step out in faith and start this church, God. I don't know how we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to walk this thing, build a Christian home, God. I don't know how I'm going to live pure in a crazy you should see all my friends. You should see all my family and what they're telling me to do. I don't know how I'm going to do this. But you know what? You have just enough strength. To say, God, I'm going to step out in faith and I'm going to obey you. And the moment we do, that's the, that's the, that's the lie the enemy, want, or that's the secret the enemy does not want you to know. Is that lit one with God is the majority. Yeah. Little bit of human strength with surrender, with faith and, and obedience is supernatural power. You say, how do you know that? It's the very thing that Paul said while he was in a Roman prison cell and he was writing to the church in Philippi. And he said, you know what, church? I know what it is to have a little and I know what it is to have a lot. But here's the thing. I can do all things through Christ. Where is it? How is it? It's through Christ who gives me the strength. It's not my strength. It's his strength. It, it, yeah, it's part of yours. We, we provide about the 1%, and he says, I'll give you. But, you know, that 1% with faith and obedience unlocks the, the rest of the 99 that comes from the Lord. Are you with me today? It's a partnership with God. I was sharing my testimony with somebody this week. And, uh, and I had a conversation, and they were asking me questions about how I got saved and different things. And, uh, and, and, and as I was sharing this, it, I was reminded, you know what? I never thought that I would be a pastor, let alone um, even talk, be a bold disciple of Jesus. It really wasn't in my personality per se. Um, it was, it certainly, I, there was a time in my life before I really surrendered to Christ where I was afraid to even admit to my friends that I even went to church. Anytime, anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? You're, it's like, you know, I don't even want to be known as a church guy, let alone, you know, I'm going to start sharing my faith. And, uh, and I literally went from, from that to now the Lord put a fire in my heart to want to preach, to want to share. And, and, and I know it's not. All I had was just a little bit of strength. But I'll never forget that the, the shift, the, literally the transformation, and I just was reminded of that this week. But, but I literally went from one day, and, and when, I, when I surrendered my life to Christ, I said, Lord, have your way. And I, and I stepped out, and the very next day I went to my bus stop, and a close friend of mine said, What's, what happened to you? And I didn't even see it. I didn't even see anything. And I said, what do you mean what happened to me? You look different. And I was like, you know, well, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? And I started looking like, I, I got a new shirt on or something. I don't know. You know, what are you talking about? She says, you just, just your whole face, your, like your smile, everything. You just look different. And I said, really? And then it dawned on me. She notices that I, something happened in my heart with God. And, I, and so then I just, and, and before I was afraid to even mention I went to church. And I said, last night I knelt by my bedside and I asked Jesus to come into my life. And literally, he filled my heart. I started sharing what happened to me the night before. He, he filled my heart with his love and his peace. And man, that's probably what you're noticing right now. And then she all of a sudden became a critic. She said, you've been brainwashed, haven't you? <laughs> and I, before the Lord, this is my response. Again, mind you, prior to that, I never even would tell people I wanted them to go to church or I even went to church. I literally, and I, this was my response. I said, you know what, girl? Not only has my brain been washed... My sins have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I almost had an out-of-body experience. I was kind of like, 
Who said that? You know, that's just a, a little, that's what he does. That's what he does. He gives you and I what we need. Are you with me today? He gives us what we need. Let's, let's, let's keep reading. How many of you are ready, ready for another verse? Look at this here. Just a few more. I'm not going to preach long. In fact, we're going to celebrate communion together in a few moments. I love this. Verse 9, it says this. Look at this. He says, ooh, ooh. The idea that Jesus is just all sweet and nice and, 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 and you know, he won't ever speak truth. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, look. He said, I know they've been, they've been messing with you guys. I'm going to force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but they're not, I'm going to force them to come and bow down at your feet. So why did Jesus say that? Practically for this reason. Because the Jewish synagogue came against the, the Christians of that day. And number one, they kicked them out of the church. And they said, you guys aren't even allowed to come in, in, into church anymore. As long as you name Jesus as, you know, your covering, you are no longer. So they not only closed their synagogue doors, but even in the, in the open square, in the public square, they would, they would mock them, they would ridicule them to where doors were closing everywhere for business, for, for work, uh, you know, even just, you know, social parties or whatever. And, uh, and, and if anything, the, this verse, you know what this, the book of Revelation in its entirety reminds us? Is that God, hear this is a God of justice. It's who he is. It's not just what he does, it's part of his character. And so sometimes, we, because we're always, we, let's just be honest, we live in a place of so much injustice. And I'm not saying that we should just get used to it, we shouldn't, and we should do our best to, to you know, in our corner of the world, we, we stand for, for, but we gotta understand, ultimately in this world, you know, there's only so much that we can do, but there will come a time when the judge, who the only one who is, we're not called to, to be the judge, nor are we called to go around and start judging everybody else. and every, That's not our, our job. But the judge is coming. And when he does, the book of Revelation reminds us, I'm going to set everything that's not right and not in order, I'm going to put it in order. Not just because that's what I want to do. It's who I am. He is, a, he is a God of truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Are you with me? I've wrapped that too many times, but I'm going to wrap it one more time. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And to get into heaven, you must be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Hit it, David. <laughs> you, gotta, you should have saw his face right there. I wish we had a camera. He was just going, he was doing his thing, and all of a sudden he goes, hey, I, I didn't do anything. I, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Ooh, somebody say he's a just God. Should this put a healthy fear inside of us? Absolutely. But also it should bring comfort to us, right? Because, yeah, you know what? Vengeance is not ours. Vengeance is his. And it's not that he's, he's a cruel. No, he's a loving God. He's patient with us. But there will come a time where he will return and everything that is out of order will be set in order. And he's letting them know. He's, he's telling this church, guys, in fact, listen, listen to the next part of this, this verse. He, ooh, man. This just keeps getting better. I don't know. If it's not blessing anybody else, it's blessing me today. So I just got to let you know. So amen all by myself if I have to here. They will acknowledge that you are the ones, you church of Philadelphia, you church of Elk Grove, you Thrive Church. They will acknowledge that you are the ones that I love. Isn't that awesome? How does Jesus describe his, his people, his bride? He says, you're the ones I love. And this is, isn't that great news? You know what? In fact, I just want to encourage you. Others may not love you right now. Others may not ever love you, but Jesus does. Does Satan love you? No. Does the, the culture uh, that at times is at enmity with the, the ways of the Lord, is it going to love us all the time? No. But Jesus loves us. In fact, tell somebody next to you, say, you're the one that Jesus loves. You're the one that he loves. You know, my question is, before I move to the next verse, and that's simply this. Do you love the church? Do I love the church, the bride of Christ, the way Jesus does? Am I committed to his bride the way he, did, he is? Do I pray for the local church? Do I serve the local church? Do I help? Do I care for my brothers and my sisters in the way that, that Jesus does? You say, why? Because the church is the one whom he loves. Amen? 
Why, why do we continue to try to be patient with each other and, and we, don't, we don't just sit? Because a lot of people are just, you know what the enemy wants us to, 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 to say and to believe is, you know what, we don't need anybody else. I don't need to be around other, but I don't need to go to church in order to become a Christian. You know what that is? A big fat lie. Not only because we actually do need each other. You know, usually when somebody says, I don't need this, what are they saying? I'm hurt. I'm hurt, so I'm going to put my guard up and I'm just going to you know, protect myself. But no, we actually do need each other. But secondly, you need to love because Jesus loves that person. You know, you, you know, how many of you guys know you don't tell a man in love, you know, I love you, but your bride? Nah, not so much. <laughs> and you definitely don't tell a lady, I love you, but your man? No, nah, I don't love. How many of you guys know that's just not going to work? Jesus says, this, this, this church, I know she's got flaws. I know she's got, but you know what I'm doing? I'm, in fact, I'm bringing this letter because I'm trying to iron out the spots and the wrinkles. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to prepare her for my coming. Are you with me today? And she is the one that I love. If you're wondering, does God still love his church? Absolutely. That's not going to change. It won't change. Some people say, well, but the church is, is imperfect. Of course it is. It's just us. Okay, let's keep reading. Ooh, it just keeps getting better here. This is why they're called the persevering church. Verse 10. We only got like three verses left and we're done. He says, because you have obeyed my command to persevere. This church obeyed the Lord. They had little strength. They obeyed. And as a result, the Lord strengthened them. And you know what they did? They did. They stood their ground. They persevered under pressure. He says, because you have persevered, I'm going to protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. There's two thoughts about this verse you need to hear. Number one is great perseverance is needed. Great spiritual muscle is needed, especially as we come closer to the coming of Christ. Being a weak Christian is not an option. Being a baby for 20 years in the faith is not an option. You can't say, well, I'm just a baby Christian. That's fine if you're young in, in your faith. In other words, you're newer in your faith. But if you've been a baby Christian for 20 years, guess what? It's not going to work as we get closer to the coming of Christ. So what does that mean? That means we need to get into our word. That means we need to press into fellowship. That means we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Pastor, you're kind of stepping on my toes. You're going to love it. The second thing this verse tells us is this, is that divine protection is provided for God's people. There is a, a hedge of protection, and, and, and you say, well, what does this verse mean? Well, many scholars believe that this is a reference to the rapture of the church. Because the Bible talks, as you continue to read the book of Revelation, that there will be a seven-year period called the tribulation. But um, many... Uh, Scholars believe that, that, that there will be a rapture, which is a, a, a carrying away. The word rapture means a carrying away, if you will, uh, of the bride of Christ. So he's going to uh, deliver us prior to this, this very difficult seven-year period on the earth. And uh, others say, well, I don't see it that way. I, I see it as more of a, a mid, you know, right in the middle he's going to carry us or at the end. My, my, my feeling is this. Now, I, I prefer to be carried prior to, you know, but if that doesn't happen, I, that's, I lean in that direction not just because that's what I want. It's because I, that's how I interpret certain things. But even if we don't know that for sure, there's no way of saying, oh, I know dogmatically. Um, whatever, this is what I do know is that even if I have to stand in court and, and, and like all the apostles who were martyred for their faith, Okay, even if, if, if it comes to that, I believe there will be a supernatural protection and strength that the Lord will provide. Because ultimately, how many of you guys, these bodies are all temporary anyway, right? But the Lord's going to give us a supernatural covering and strength to endure whatever time of testing will come. It, it might be that he's going to deliver us from. It might be that he's going to allow us to go through to bring him glory and that we can stand and, and proclaim the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, God's got us. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody next to you, he's got you. Amen. If you're online, right there, just brother, he's got me right there. Preach to somebody on, online. Just tell him, he's got you. He's got you. Listen to what Jesus says next. Ooh, he says it. He said, when's he going to come? No man knows the day or the hour, but this is what we do know. Verse 11. He says, I am coming soon. I'm coming soon. When is he coming? Soon. You say, well, pastor, he said that already a long time ago. To man, what does the scripture say? A day is 
A thousand years, a thousand years is a day. Obviously, the ways of the Lord are higher than our ways because God's the God of eternity. You know, um, God blinks. You know, um, he is in every time. He's obviously, he's bigger than just time. So, but God says, I'm coming. But he said this 2,000 years ago. He says, I'm coming soon. Does God want his people to be ready? In fact, Jesus told many parables about the readiness and the preparation that his bride needs to have. In fact, one of the, uh, the parables that he told was the parable of the ten virgins. I won't read it all today, but he simply said five virgins. They were, they were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. And it's a, prep, it's, a, it's a parable about the readiness that we need to have for the soon return of Christ. And he said five of the virgins, five of the, the, uh, the, 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 the bridesmaids, if you will, had oil in their lamp and five did not. In other words, five were ready and five were distracted by all the busyness of life, by all the details of the wedding, by all the, the concerns of this world. And I believe that the whole book of Revelation, especially the seven letters, are to remind us, church, that he is coming soon. And to ready our hearts, to not get pulled, to not, yes, do we, do we live in the real world? Absolutely. Our feet are, are you know, are on this, on, on planet earth, right? But, but, but our hearts, our citizenship, our minds, and, and, and we, that we should never constantly get sucked into, but we should always keep our eyes up. Looking for the return, looking for what he has for us. In fact, I said this, I was talking, I had a conversation with a, uh, a mom and her daughter um, right after the, the first service. And, and we were talking about some of the prophetic events in our lifetime. And, and there are incredible things that have happened in our generation that are unique to any other generation. One of them, and this is, you know, obvious, is the, the fact that the, the nation of Israel actually since 1948 has become a nation. There is, throughout history, you know, people thought that there's no way that would ever happen. So maybe God would just have to do something else. No, that was one of the major p prophetic pieces. So are we near the, of course, do, does, so Pastor, give me the day or the hour. No man knows that. God knows that. Our job is to be ready. Our job is to be energized, anticipatory, ready. Amen. Okay. Ooh, look at the next part here. Almost just went to the next verse here. He said, hold on. No, go, go back. Hold on. Somebody say, hold on. Let's tell, let's tell Brother Mario back there. Hold on, brother. Don't move to the next slide yet. I'm teasing, brother. You know, I'm messing with you. He's my fellow Niner buddy right there, so I can say that. Hold on to what you have. Just put your, just hold on right here. Hold on to, no, so that no one will take away your crown. Just hold on to it right now. Just tell somebody next to you, you're not going to take this from me right here. You're not going to take, no, obviously we're here to encourage each other, but but you know what this remind you know what this tells us? You know what Jesus was telling us? He was saying this, listen, nobody can take it from you. But also, I've already given it to you. Salvation, it's already been given to you. Okay? And I've given you the deposit. I've given you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the deposit, meaning it's the it's the, the down payment of the full reward that's coming. Okay, I've get the, whole, the fact that the Holy Spirit lives within us, that's the deposit, the, the guarantee of his promise, okay, of the full reward, the full payment that is coming. But our job is while we're waiting for the, 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 the return, the, the full reward, we got to hold on to our salvation. We got to hold on to our crown. We can't let anybody take it. You say, who wants to take it? The devil wants to take it. Our flesh wants to take it. You say, what is our flesh? It means that selfish, sinful side that we were born with that just wants to make excuses why we should be able to live this way or do this way or you were just born this way. It's because you're Mexican. It's because you're Irish that you're angry. It's because you're Mexican that you're whatever. You know, we, we have all kinds of excuses that our flesh wants to make as to why we should continue to do our, go our way. Our job is to say, no, I'm holding on to my crown. I'm not going to let my flesh lie to me. I'm not going to let current culture lie to me and tell me what I need to believe. No, I'm going to hold on to what God has said to me. I'm preaching strong today. Come on, somebody. Woo, I feel the Holy Spirit. Look at two more verses. How many can handle two more verses? Either way, I'm going to preach them. So we, 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 I'm teasing. I'm feeling a little, like, punchy today or something. Not, not punchy, but just a little spot. That extra hour of sleep, just do me right. We just need to do this every week. I can handle this. This is, oh, I love this. He says, all who are victorious. He's talking about you, Thrive Church. He's talking about you. 
You say, well, I only got little strength. Yeah, he's talking about you. All who have just little strength, but are willing to so, so, trust and obey God. All who are victorious will become pillars. Ooh, in the temple of my God, Jesus says. And they will never have to leave it. Why did he say that? Because you know why? They were hurting. They were told, you can't come into the temple anymore as long as you bear that name. Because you wear the Jesus badge, yeah, you, 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 can't, you, you can't come into the temple. And Jesus says, don't sweat it. Their temple isn't really the one that's going to matter anyways. Because my temple, not only are you going to be, you never have to leave it, but you are actually pillars. As long as you stay strong and you stay victorious and you persevere and don't let anybody take your crown, guess what? You're, 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 a, you're, you're part of the, the foundation. You're part of the strength and the thing that's holding this thing together. As I'm looking around this room, and even I believe that the, many that are watching today online, I believe that we're here today, I'm looking at a bunch of spiritual pillars. Not because we're so strong in our strength, in our own selves, but we're willing to yield to the Lord. And in that, the Lord is making us strong. Amen? And then he says this, and he says, and I will write on them the name of my God. Why did he say that? Just like, ladies, when you get married, you take on the name of your spouse, your husband, right? And he said this, he said, I'm going to seal my covenant. And you know what? You're going to take on my name. You see, why was that important to them? Because they, they, were, they were getting closed doors because of the name of Jesus. He said, don't sweat it. I'm putting my name on you. You're mine. Okay? You're in covenant with me. And then he says this, and, you, and they will become, they will be citizens in the city of my God. Well, guess what? Because of their Christianity, because they refused to call Caesar Lord, they, did, they were not allowed citizenship in Rome. That was one of the closed doors. And Jesus said, don't sweat it. Guess what? You're, the citizenship on this earth, it's not even about that anyways. Because what ultimately what matters is that your citizenship is in heaven. Your citizenship is in the city of God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Somebody say yes. The new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven. And I will also write on them my new name. Somebody say yes. Woo. And the last verse. He says, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Come from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just tell somebody next to you, we're holding on to that crown today. We're not letting that thing go, amen. As the worship, excuse me, as our ushers distribute, did everybody already receive these? We already got them? Awesome. Well, as our worship team, if you didn't get one, just lift your hand and, and our ushers will come and find you right now. Ushers, if you can just look around, see somebody with their hand lifted. We want to make sure. And as you get these, hold on to them because we're going to all receive it in, a, in about three minutes here, uh, two or three minutes all together with, as one church. But let's just right now take this moment to just begin to worship the Lord. This this one line that we're going to sing together. Say it with me. Not by might. Let's try that one more time. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. You say, what are we saying? It's not our strength. It's the strength of the Lord. Amen. He's, gonna, he's making us strong. Come on, somebody.
of the darkness into your love, into your light. Grace upon grace, beauty for ashes. You come to us and we come alive. So God, if you can do that, how much more can you do in our everyday life, God? You say, what is the communion elements? Of course, we understand these are the symbols of the body and blood of Jesus, which are also the symbols of the things that open the door to heaven. This is right here. The body and blood of Jesus is what is, is opened a door that no one can close. So if we can hold the bread... Boy, these things are good. Times are getting tough these days, man. They get, these are getting smaller here. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm sorry. Inflation's tough. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm teasing. <laughs> I know. But how many guys know there's no lack in him, amen? We just got, I just had to save that. I just had to reel that back in real quick here. You know what's beautiful about the symbol and what this, the Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. By his, in his brokenness, we are made whole. This is really a reminder that our strength comes from the Lord. That because of his sacrifice on the cross, that we can be strong. We have little strength, but we can obey him. We can yield to him. And, and I believe this also is a reminder that he wants to touch us. He cares about our every need. He does. He, in the Bible, Jesus said himself said, I, I know every hair on your head. I count them all. How many of us, for some of us, that goes quick. It's a quick count. Others of us, it takes a while. <laughs> He's getting a little, yeah, anyway, all right. Back to the anointing. Back to the anointing. 
you're here today and you would say, you know what? Like the song says, I don't, I don't want to lean on the arm of my strength. I want to build my life on his strength. I want to present to him my, my faith and obedience. Although it's just the size of a mustard seed. But I believe God wants to do big things. If that's you, just hold it up to the Lord and say, yes, God. Jesus, we look to you. We look to your body that was broken for us. And in this, we find our strength. We find healing. We find wholeness today. In the name of Jesus, let's receive together. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Whenever you eat this bread, you remember my death until you come. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, this is my blood. He said, this is in so many words, this is the symbol of my blood, which is shed for you. And it's upon this that I will establish my new covenant, my new agreement with mankind. That you don't have to come in your strength. You don't have to come in your righteousness. You are now, all you need to do is to put your hope in his righteousness that he accomplished. And we, we said, what, what's my part? My part is to repent. My part is to turn from my way, humble myself, and go his way. Faith and repentance. So if you're here today and you would say, I'm leaning upon the blood of Jesus to be my righteousness. Just like that song we sang earlier, the blood cries out. It, it rewrites our history speaks our destiny. It's calling out our name. And Lord, today we say yes to your calling today. We hold this up, God, as a way of just saying, God, our, we worship you. We remember you, God. And our hope is in you and your blood that was shed for us on the cross. In Jesus' name, let's drink today in faith. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. If you're here today and you've been away from God, just, just tell them right now. Just say, Lord, I put my hope in you again, God. I'm coming home. I'm coming home today, Lord. I'm turning from my way so that I could obey and follow you in your way, God. Not my will, your will, God. Not my way, your way, God. Have your way in my life, God. I've opened a door that no one can close, he said. I'm opening doors that no man can close. God's moving. He's wanting to move in each of our lives. Where is he wanting to move in your life right now? You say, what, what, what is my part? My part, it's all, he always works with us. Our part is small, but it's big to us. Our part is to yield, to, to trust and obey. Starts with trust. You got God. I'm, I'm trusting. Even just, just my, my faith is like only this big. It's just a mustard seed. It's just so small, but it's big to me. It's all I got. And because of that, God, I just you're, you you wouldn't be here today if you didn't have at least mustard seed size faith. So you're you're already halfway there. Now it's Lord God. I'm gonna I'm gonna go your way. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna humble myself. I'm gonna do what you want me to do. And in that, watch what He does. Watch what He does. Can I say one last thing? And that's this. I believe that these these letters are to sharpen us for his soon return. Usually around January, everybody, myself included, say, you know what, oh, it's time. I gotta start going to the gym again. I gotta get, I gotta get sharp again. Cause you know what? We've gotten a little, I've gotten a little off track during the holidays. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I've, how many have already started? You've already started. I've, holidays have already started for me like two weeks ago. <laughs> and I've, I've been eating pie already, cookies. I shouldn't have said that out loud. <laughs> But, but I feel like in the spirit, the Lord is saying, and in the natural, but in this moment in the spirit, I believe the Lord is saying, you know what? I need my, I need my, I need my people to be sharp. We can't just be, you know, no, we, we, we gotta, we gotta, you know, you say, well, I don't have them. I, we, we don't, we don't have a lot, but, but bring what we have. Strengthen us. We got to get sharp in our, in our spiritual disciplines, even. 
So what are spiritual disciplines? Those things like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be committed to fellowship. I'm gonna be committed to prayer. The early church they devoted themselves to four things: to prayer, to the breaking of bread, which is speaking of uh, the word, the apostles' teaching, and then to fellowship, meaning like they were at church, and uh, what was the third? And to the breaking of bread, to the breaking of bread, meaning like deep fellowship, not just not just coming to church, but also, man, I'm gonna. pray one last prayer and if you want personal prayer in a moment when we close we'll, we'll have our pastors and leaders available and then and let me say this as well, uh, as well before we pray next Sunday ooh, it's gonna be a great Sunday I encourage you at all costs be, be here if you can because uh, we're gonna give not only testimony of what God's done through through the whole kingdom builders ministry in the year 2022 it's it's been like like a record, record year. And I mean, not like just, like we didn't just kind of like barely surpass last year. We like went, Whoosh. something's happening in this church. Yes. And, uh, but also we're going to share vision of what God wants to do in and through us and how we're going to partner with the Lord and each other to build his kingdom in 2023. Not only in terms of giving, but in serving and ministering and, and doing. We're, God's going to do, Lord willing, we're going to plant a, a church in, in, in 2023. As well, that's part of it. It's just, there's just some exciting things. So, so next week's going to be like Vision Sunday. You got to come, and, and uh, I'm going to preach too. I got a word from the Lord. It's going to be powerful. So, but I want to pray for just specifically for the one and just say, Pastor, just pray for me because I just want to. I believe the Lord wants to open a door. He is opening a door, but He's calling me to walk through it. I've been a little hesitant, been a little reluctant, but the Lord's going to just. I want to pray for you, the Lord, to give you that last little nudge of strength. So if that's you right now, just place your hand over your heart. God, I thank you for these amazing people. It's your, this is your bride, God. These are, these are your people. And I pray that you give them, God, that little, that little, that number one, that clarity of where and how they're to step out in faith, but also, Lord, the strength from the Lord to walk through that door, that open door, God. Give them that, that, that clarity and give them that strength today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Love you, church. We bless you. Before you walk out of these doors, can you do this? Find at least three people and just smile at them and speak a word of life. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.